Hi there, so welcome to this YouTube video. And um, you know, for a while, people have been trying to ask me, you know, um, how do I really know the one? And I totally understand them because um, I used to be there, where um, maybe you've met someone and um, you know, some things gel, some things don't gel, some things seem to be okay, some you know, seem not to be okay. And you, you kind of are not sure whether, you sh whether this is the person or this is not the person, whether I should go with this person or not. So um, I've been thinking about some things and I thought of, I've been thinking about how to make this easier for people. So I thought of something, a way to look at it, and um, I hope it helps. And I'll take a few questions when I'm done. So um, we're looking at today how to know the one, how to know the one. It's part of what we've been talking about for a while. For those of you that follow us on social media, Instagram and Facebook and all that. Uh, but today I want to do a YouTube version of it and, and all that. So basically, um, how to know the one. Because of the complexities involved, I tried to narrow it down to a way to be simple. Every human being is made up of three parts, okay? Every human being is made up of three parts, spirit, soul, and body. Now, this, this is what makes up a full human being. And you have somebody in your life, somebody's around you, you, you are not sure, you, or you want to know if, if you should go with the flow. Um, divide the three aspects, all right? You're trying to simplify this, so di divide the three aspects. Now, in case you are here, let me just say this, in case you are here and um, God has spoken to you that this is the person or this is not the person, then all these things I'm explaining doesn't really matter to you because you are sure you've heard God. So I'm, I'm talking to the person that maybe is still in a bit of a, you know, confusion or a confused place. That's the person I'm talking to, okay? So divide you three, um, spirit, soul, and body. Now, I believe, and these are my opinions, for the married to at least have a good chance, you should have two over three, all right? You should have two over three going in your direction or going the way you want. Now, there are some people that interestingly have the whole three. You know, and that's obviously great, and that usually means that there's a high chance the marriage will be great, all right? Um, but two over three minimum. I think one over three going your way, uh, it's kind of dicey. I think it's risky. I think it might be a stretch. Now, it doesn't mean it might never work. You know, it might, it might build the other ones, but, you know, it just means there's a lot of work to be done. Okay, so spirit, soul, and body. I will start with the most important part to me is your spirit, you know, your spirit. Now, um, what is your spirit? Is with your spirit you relate with the spiritual world because spiritual and body every human being has spiritual and body with the spirit you relate with the spiritual world with your soul you relate with the mental and uh, emotional world and with your body you relate with the physical world okay so every human being has this three so the spiritual part so you meet somebody the spiritual part is in terms of what you guys believe it's your spiritual part what you guys believe in terms of your relationship with god um the, the values that guide you in terms of spiritual things so um, if I meet a lady now, for me, I would like to know, is she a Christian? That's me. I would like to know, is she a Christian? Now, I would like to know, which kind of Christian is she? Then I would like to know what she believes. Is she really committed to her spiritual well-being? All right? Is she committed? How, I, mean, I mean, how much does spirituality even weigh? Because some people really don't care. They don't care about spirituality. I, I believe it's very important because it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's actually the core part of you as a human being. This is the part of you that will live the longest because this is the part of you that is actually like God. When they say we are made in the image and likeness of God, <laughs> we definitely don't resemble God physically because we are all different physically. Some poor are short, some poor are tall, some poor are fat, some poor are slim. Where we really resemble God is spiritually. We are, we, are, we are made with the same substance that God is made of. And remember, the Bible says God is a spirit. So we too are spirits, principally. In fact, the way somebody said it is that you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. So it follows, that, that also shows the level of importance. You are principally a spirit, you have a soul, then you live in a body. That shows, um, you know, what other of importance. So spiritually. So um, when I met my wife, I had to know that she was a Christian, number one. I had to know that she served in church. She believed in serving God. She, I had to also check how committed she was to the word of God. You know, there's some Christians that are Christians, and the word of God is just a suggestion for them. It's just, um, you know, a book we read. You know, it's, it's folk tales. It's my book of Bible stories. Just something we read. You see, but I, for me, I have to know that this person understands that the Bible is the final authority, that this is how we live our lives. This is what controls us. Spiritual standing, number one. Next point is the soul. The soul. Now, the soul consists of your will, your emotions, your intellect. So you are asking the question, do we have similar values? Do we think, I mean, intellectually, let me say this way, do we like to talk? Do we enjoy to talk? If, 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 I, if, if something is going on, will I be glad to discuss it with this person? If we sit down, 
and we don't have to touch each other, no physical touch of, of sex, and we are not praying together, do we have enough to talk about? Do we have enough? Do we, are we connected? Do I feel emotionally excited when I see you? Do I feel we share a mental connection? Do we, do we see values the same way? Do we have similar social skills? Do we, do we, do, 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 do we enjoy talking together? That's your soul. All right? Now, the third one is your body. So this is where, oh, um, I want this person six feet. I want them to be fat. I want them to be slim. I find them attractive. I don't find them attractive. Body. It's also important. However, I believe in the order. This is least important. So, now, um, spirit, soul, and body. I said at least, I feel, I feel that you must have two at least going your way. Some people have the three. It's great. You must have at least two. If you have just one, my question would be, which one is it that you have going right now? If it's just body you like in this person, and you don't connect mentally and emotionally and intellectually, and you don't have similar values spiritually, if it's just body, I don't think the relationship will work. Why? It's very simple. Um, your body alone, physical attraction alone, cannot sustain a marriage. It cannot sustain a long-term relationship. I like the way somebody said this. He says, show me a very, very pretty girl, and I will show you a guy that is tired of sleeping with her. <laughs> As somebody said it. He said, show me a pretty woman, and I will also show you a guy that is tired of sleeping with her. And the truth is that those of, you know, most of us, we've seen in our world, we've seen people marry very fine girls and still cheat on them. Why? Because physical attraction fades. It's just normal, man. There's nothing you can do about it. You know, once you, you I mean, I, mean <laughs> I, was, I was in a live show today with an ex-stripper. An ex-stripper. We did, we did a recording today. He's an American. He's a white, uh, Caucasian American. He was an ex He was the biggest stripper in his city <laughs> before he became born again and is now a Christian. And he shared some of these things. You see, no matter how pretty the girl is, you will get tired. No matter how handsome the man is, you will get tired if these two are not there. If it's just body, after a while, you will start drifting apart because you will get tired of that body. So physical alone can never hold a marriage. The foundation is never strong. And everywhere in scripture, they talk about physical attraction or your body. Um, they always contrast it with these two. Everywhere. So you will see the Bible in places like First Peter. It will say, um, let your adorning not be the outward adorning of plating of hair, physical beauty, of wearing of apparel and earrings, fine dressing and fine um, jewelry. He said, let it be the adorning of the inward man of the heart. So they were contrasting it to this two. Um, Proverbs 31 will tell you, beauty is vain, charm is deceitful. He said, a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. So, so Proverbs was contrasting this and this. Professor Emeritus, um, Professor Solomon David, you know him? Um, he, he, before Harvard, he was, <laughs> you understand? Professor Emeritus Solomon, he, he surveyed 1,000 women. He dated and he had 1,000 women in his life. He married 700, dated 300 and at the same time. And he surveyed it and he came out with some philosophy, some principles. He said, he said, a beautiful woman that doesn't have discretion, he says, like, in fact, this is the way um, the message translation puts it. He says, a beautiful face on an empty head, a beautiful face on an empty head, it's like putting a gold ring in a pig's snout. Now, in those Bible days, um, the way you marry someone is by giving them a nose ring. It's part of how they do it. So if you see in the book of Genesis 24, where Isaac, um, where they found wife for Isaac, when that servant found Rebekah, one of the first things he did was to give her a gold ring for the nose. And it, it, so so Solomon, Solomon was saying, a beautiful face on an empty head is like putting a gold ring, like marrying a woman, that has no, I mean, if I put a gold ring in front of it, inside the pig's nose, that means it's useless. So everywhere in scripture, there are many places. The Bible said, though the outward man perishes, the outward man is dying every day. It said the inward man, these two, is renewed day by day. You can get smarter and you can get more spiritual, uh, but your body is dying every day. This one is dying every day. So basically, this one can never on its own hold. Okay? So let's remove this one. We have two more left. We have these two left. So, um, which one is working for you? Um, I have a problem with just this one. This, this is great. This is almost the strongest one. Almost the strongest one. However, it cannot also survive alone. Because it's possible to have a lot of mental connection with someone, emotional connection with someone. However, the real values that drives them as a human being is not there. So, I would start with the most important one for me, which is the spirit. 
I feel that if you meet a guy, so check, do we agree here? If this, if this guy passes this test, and this is a bit easy to pass because you're either a serious Christian or you're not. It's pretty direct. So if the guy passes this test, the next question is to say is, do we connect? Do we enjoy each other's company? Most of the time when people tell me things like, um, there's a guy, I like him, we connect, we're friends. I mean, there's a guy, he's nice, he's caring and everything, but I'm not attracted to him physically. What I ask them is that, but are you connected with him emotionally? You know what I discovered after many years? Most times when people are complaining that they don't like somebody physically, they also have not connected with him really, emotionally and um, intellectually. Because it's hard to really connect with someone emotionally, intellectually, you know, and all that, and not find them attractive. It's hard. Even if they are not stunning, even if they are not uh, models, if you really connect here, eventually, you will begin to see them as being attractive. You begin to like them. You will like them enough not to even notice that you didn't like them initially physically. So this is, this is a major, major, major part. Do we connect mentally, intellectually, you know, emotionally? Do we connect? Um, this, is, this was actually where I first got attracted to my wife. And I think it was also a major part of what made me, you know, love her or let me say fall in love with her as they say. This was the major part. You know, when this happened, that, then I checked if this was there. Because of course, it might be difficult to check somebody's real spiritual standing in one day. So later I checked, this was there, so that made me more confident. Then she's also very pretty. So baseline, if you are bothered about this, this doesn't matter so much if these two are there, to be honest with you. If these two are there, please go ahead and marry the person. This will work out. That's that what I feel. I feel this will work out. Because I've seen people say, oh, pastor, the guy is not tall. The guy is not tall. So I asked them, have you dated somebody that is tall before? I say, yes. Where is he? He ran away. <laughs> you see, body doesn't matter. Because I, I, I'm, on some of my videos, I've shared that when you, are sing, when you are single, before the marriage, you focus so much on your wants. But after the marriage, you start to focus on your needs. All right? Before the marriage, you focus so much on your wants. But after the marriage, you focus more on your needs. Because your needs are the ones that will matter most. You see, before you get married, you are interested, you, you, you want um, a, a handsome man, a, 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 a fine man. But when you are married, you, want, you need a faithful man. You need a faithful man. Before you get married, you want a rich man, a rich man. But, but when you get married, you need a caring man. Because a man can be rich and not care about you. <laughs> so you're more interested in somebody that cares about you than somebody that has a lot of money. Because if you have a lot of money and you don't care about me, I mean, Bill Gates is rich, but he doesn't know me, he doesn't care about me, so it doesn't matter. All right? My wife, too, is rich, and she cares about me, so that, that works well. All right? So basically, uh, so that's the point. So um, I want to take a few questions. We'll take from Instagram. So the point is that I want to know what you think and how I can help paint a clearer picture for you. All right? So I said, so I asked people, if... Um, the bodies, you don't like the person's body, do you connect physically? I mean, do you connect emotionally and intellectually? I find out that most times they really don't connect emotionally and intellectually. Don't rush into a relationship just because you are lonely or just because it's, it's time you have somebody. Because it's going to be a long journey. If there's no real connection, you're going to get worn out. So, um, do, you, do you really connect? Do you really connect? Do you have similar spiritual values? Do you have strong mental and emotional connection? If you do, this one will be easy. So this helps make the decision. If this is not there, I think there's a big problem. This is a bit easy because if we go to, if we, if we are both real Christians, this is fine. This is automatic for real good Christians. Now, of course, there are people that are fake Christians or not real Christians, but I think this is the So let's do questions. All right. Yes. So if, you, if somebody said, if I, have a, if, I, if I see a tall guy, I'm more prone to think that he's the one. Um, over a short guy. That's great, but this, uh, what of these two? If you have a tall guy that doesn't have the fear of God, doesn't know God, and you guys don't, can't talk, you guys are not good friends, then it doesn't matter really whether he's tall or short. It doesn't matter whether he's tall or short. So the question is, where are you, where are you guys in terms of these two? He's tall, he's short, great. If this is not here, you see, his height won't matter. If he's not at home to talk to you, he doesn't know God, no fear of God. No, you guys don't connect spiritually also. See, we're looking at how, how strong a connection can be. The way God wants it, you guys should connect. Remember he said two shall become one. You guys are meant to connect in all these three strongly. You guys are meant to connect in all these three strongly. So rate it for yourself 
where are you in terms of spiritual connection? Where are you in terms of your mental or emotional connection? And where are you in terms of physical attraction? So where are you in the three? Rate it and you will know. So tall or not, where is this? That's what I want to know. Where is this? Yes, that's a major thing because that church, you said there's someone that you guys don't agree in terms of church. Well, that church will also determine some of his beliefs. That church will determine some of his beliefs. So um, that might become a major challenge in the future. So I need you to think about that. That might become a major challenge in the future if you guys don't believe the same things. N nowadays, there's so, many, there's so much um, doctrines going on. There are many Christians, then there are many denominations, and they believe different things. So you need to find, I, I believe it's better for you to find somebody that you guys have closeness in terms of what you believe. If there's a sharp contrast in what you guys believe spiritually, that can become a challenge, yeah. There's no one person made for you. There are many godly options, and that's why we're doing this, so that you can find other areas you guys can connect. There's no, there's no one person that is for you in the whole world. All right, but there are many godly options. There's a, there's a kind of person, not one person, but the one kind of person. I don't know if you understand that, yeah. Yeah, somebody said, what if the spirit and the body is there, no soul connection? I'll be bothered about that because I think this is actually the main one. Um, spiritually, um, it's not really based too much on individuality. If, we, if, we, if you're a good Christian, most of the Christian doctrines are already set. If you're a good Christian, it's simple and clear. Uh, we don't believe in divorce, we live in prayer, we believe in tithing, we believe in honoring um, God's servants, we believe in going to church. So if you're a general, regular Christian, this should be easy. should be a bit easier for you. Um, this is where the challenge is because we can all be Christians in the same church and our thinking, our general thinking, our general exposure is wide apart, wide apart. So there are Christians in the same church, but the way they think, the way they see life is wide apart. How do you deal with pretense? Enjoy friendship. The key to pretense is be friends for a long time. That's why I tell people, don't rush into, uh, we meet on Monday, how are you? Then on Thursday, we are dating. I love you. I miss you. I kiss you. Mm -mm. Don't do that like that. Meet somebody, get to know them on a neutral level. If they are trying to be too aggressive in terms of relationship, tell them, no, 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 I'm not ready for that. Let's just be friends. Let's talk. You see, when you put the relationship aside, you get to see the person a bit more. You get to see the, time is the master of deception. So allow friendship, allow time. I've counseled many people, and I tell them, remove relations from the table. You will know what the guy's intentions are. If the guy really likes you, enjoys your company, he won't be, he won't be in a hurry to sleep with you. He won't be in a hurry to say, let's, let's start dating. No, no, no. Let's talk. I enjoy talking to you. So it allows, so time is the master of pretense. Time helps pretense. All right? Be friends and um, give it some time. All right, so... I just wanted to run through this to see if it could help you to know how to connect. Check where you guys connect spiritually. Check where you guys connect uh, mentally and emotionally, intellectually. Do you guys talk? Are you friends? Can you share similar values? Do you guys have enough to talk about? Do you see things, you know, largely in the same way, the same kind of way? That's why if you notice um, some rich people um, don't like their kids marrying poor people. Um, that's why they do that. They, um, they're, they're, they're just not, it's not, it's not, not, it's not just about discrimination. What, what, they are, what they are bothered about is here. Because if you grow in a very rich home, your thinking will be largely different from the person that is an average person or a poor person. If, if you're very rich, uh, from a very rich home and you want to marry somebody, the pe if the person is not rich like you, the person must be, must be incredibly flexible mentally. If they are not flexible mentally, you guys will have a lot of clash. I'll use examples. Um, for a rich person, going on vacation is not luxury, it's normal. For a poor person, they've not, they can't even imagine it, that you, you, you work for the whole year and take your whole year's income and go for vacation. There's already a problem. In fact, from planning the wedding, there will be a crisis already. Because how the rich person want to do the wedding, it's not how the average guy or the poor guy want to do it. So the only way this, that can work is if the average class or the, or the poorer person is very flexible mentally, can think big, can flex, can, can also imagine where the rich people are coming from. So that's why rich people don't like other drama, just one there. So they like two rich people to marry. <laughs> because we, are, we will just talk on the same level. All right, so do we connect? Do we connect? All right, so I hope this was helpful. Thank you. Don't forget, share, subscribe, do everything possible. And um, see you next time.